Hi everyone, my name's James Ivey with Antelope Audio. In this video, we're going to look at recording a vocal track using Antelope Audio modeling microphones and Synergy Core effects. We'll talk about the routing and gain staging of the signal path, selecting and committing effects to tape, so to speak, as well as the fundamentals of mic placement and choosing the correct polar pattern for your vocalist. So let's get to it. Antelope Audio produced two mics that are well suited to recording the human voice. These are the Edge Solo and Edge Duo. Both of these mics are what we call condenser microphones with a single or pair of diaphragms respectively. The Edge Solo records to a single channel and has a fixed cardioid polar pickup pattern, meaning it accepts signals coming from directly in front but rejects those coming from its rear. Cardioid mics are great for vocals, but you do have to be aware that the closer the performer gets to a cardioid mic, the more bass the mic picks up. As you move back, the mic's sound tends to open up and become more natural. This is known as the proximity effect. The Edge Duo records to a pair of channels via two XLR mic inputs. Its twin diaphragm design gives it a variable polar pickup pattern, from omnidirectional through cardioid and hypercardioid to figure of eight. The figure eight setting can be very useful if you're recording two singers facing each other, while omnidirectional can be very useful for recording groups of singers. Omni mics also have the added benefit of not suffering from the proximity effect, so if your singer likes to get up close to the mic and you find you're getting too much bass in the sound, maybe try setting the mic away from cardioid towards a wide cardioid or even full omnidirectional settings. You should always use a good quality mic stand that is solid with a heavy bass. It does not have to be a super heavyweight studio style stand like this one. A conventional stand is fine, but it should be solid and tightened securely to put the head basket of the mic around 6 to 10 inches away from the performer's mouth. And you should always use a pop screen or blast shield to stop plosive P's and B's ruining your vocal take. For this session, we're using the Antelope Audio Orion Studio Synergy Core audio interface connected to a MacBook Pro via Thunderbolt running Pro Tools Ultimate. However, no matter which DAW you're using, the process will be pretty much the same. First, in the Antelope Audio control panel, we're going to drag the first two mic emulation nodes to AFX in 1 and 2. This means that anything coming into our mic will be routed to our AFX chain. We then route from AFX out 1 and 2 into Comp or Computer Record 1 and 2. We're also going to check that Comp Play 1 and 2 are routed to our main monitor outs and to our headphones. In this example, we're going to be monitoring on headphones from the playback from the DAW. For a more detailed tutorial on complex routing and the use of the Antelope Audio software mixers, check out our tutorial called Advanced Routing and Real-Time Monitoring with Effects and Routing, Tracking and Monitoring with the Discrete Control Panel. Now, in your DAW, set up a stereo record channel and make sure that the inputs are set accordingly. In our current recording state, there are two points in the signal chain we really need to keep an eye on. Where the signal comes into our system, i.e. the input gain to the microphone preamp, and the level that hits our DAW. Too much signal at either of these points could compromise our take. Setting the level that comes into the interface is done with the preamp gain controls, which can either be accessed from the front panel of the unit or from the control panel. However, First, we need to tell the first two mic pre's that have the antelope mic modeling features, in this case channels 5 and 6, which mic we are using. I'm going to be recording using the Antelope Audio Edge Duo, so I'll hit the mic emulation button and set the channel accordingly. The phantom power and channel pairing is automatically set for me. Now I slowly wind up the gain until I get a good level. Just over halfway up the meter is good, but not too much as we don't want to overdrive the input and cause a distortion. We can also choose the mic model at this time. The best way to find out which one you like or which one you feel works well for a particular artist is to just try some. The Vienna 12 has always worked well for my voice. In a modern digital recording environment with an interface like the Orion Studio Synergy Core with its incredibly high signal to noise ratio, there's no need to get as hot a signal as possible 
to disc. A good level in at the mic pre should translate to a good level hitting our DAW. There should be no sign of red clipping indicators. In AFX slots 1 and 2, I'll pair these together, I'm first going to add an EQ. I'm going to choose the MG4+, Plus, which is a very powerful, clean EQ that's very easy to dial in. The Skyband feature also helps me get amazing clarity without the vocal sounding harsh or thin. We can use the plug-in trim control to make sure we're not overloading the output and in turn not driving up the gain of our recording channel. The buzz term here is gain staging. We're going to do our very best to make sure we keep a good strong signal through the chain whilst maintaining a good level of headroom to allow for any sudden changes in level in the performance. Now I'm going to add a compressor in the form of the FET A78 to take control of the voice. Then I'll add the Tube Child 670 Classic Limiter to add some vintage character to the voice. I'm not going to slam either of these hard, I just want to get their character into the recording. I'm really happy with how this is sounding, but I feel there's more I could do. I'm going to add the RD47 Vintage Mic Pre to the top of the chain to help warm up the vocal. Now let's check our level to Pro Tools is not too hot and go for a take. She said you're just a temptation and a minor one at that. I took it for a sign. If we fancy getting even more creative, we could add some modulation effects like the space flanger to this channel, as we can have up to eight effects in an effects stack. Or we can create a parallel chain where we again drag from our mic emulation inputs to a second pair of AFX channels and route these to another pair of comp record channels and inputs in our DAW. So with this take, we are capturing both the safe process channels and the modulated channels. Then, with the ultimate safety in mind, we could route from the mic pre, not the emulation path, directly to a pair of channels in Pro Tools as an unaffected, unprocessed, clean recording chain, just in case we fall out of love with the processed sounds. So there you go, that's how to record a vocal using Antelope Audio modeling microphones, audio interfaces, and Synergy Core effects. I hope you enjoyed that. My name's James Ivey, and I hope to see you again very soon.